Welcome to the city, Mastermind City, a city filled with endless masterminds and limitless possibilities. Learn the secrets that bring business and personal success through our unique one-stop destination that gives you year-round live access to every mastermind running in the city. And it includes live coaching, Q&As, hot seats, and more. Hi, I'm Faye Chappell. And I'm Stacey Maynard. And this is the Hot Topics of the Week, where we bring you a vibrant, uplifting, and inspiring conversation focused on how you can make a lasting impact for yourself and for your business. Because the truth is, life is a marathon, not a sprint. And that's why our listeners keep coming back. For us, this is more than just a business. It's a professional community. So if you're ready to go, you're in the right place. Welcome to the city. Remember Mm -hmm. back in the day when stories, back in the day, like a billion years ago, um, when stories first came out, right? Stories started with Snapchat, then they went on Instagram, and then LinkedIn decided that they were going to take it on and they (laughs) were going to do stories. And I remember- um, We tried. (laughs) You had a friend in, was it Australia? Yeah. We knew somebody that was in Australia. Yeah. We didn't get it right away. No. And I remember them showing us, I'm like, oh my goodness, there's stories on LinkedIn. Like, looks so bizarre. Yeah. And then LinkedIn tried it and we got it over here in North America. And uh, it quickly dissipated, just went away <laughs> because like, why would they do it? It was kind of silly. Well, welcome to LinkedIn's world again. No, oh, no. But now what they've done is, you know, Again, we started with TikTok and video streams on your social media platform individually. And then Instagram adopted the reels. Well, now LinkedIn has hopped on the bandwagon again. I feel like LinkedIn's like the ugly stepchild or something. It's like, I want to participate too. Yeah, they have a little bit of FOMO going on. (laughs) I think so, I think so. So if you go to your LinkedIn app, um, it's being slowly rolled out, but you will now see the second over uh, is called video. So now you can click on that and you can watch sort of TikTok and real style videos. They're a little bit, I'm not, I hate to use the word better because that's yeah. a very bad word to use. So I don't want to use that word, but they're, they're trying. I, I feel like that, you know, people who put videos on LinkedIn, like some of our clips go on LinkedIn, but some of them don't, you know, like I think it depends on what you're talking about. Right. Um, you know, kind of things. So yeah, I feel like it's the FOMO that yeah. LinkedIn is having that they're like, well, well, wait a minute, everybody else has a video stream. I need mm-hmm. one too. So they have that. It's going to be interesting. I think this will actually stay because I think people are interested in watching videos. I remember, I think I have a post from like seven years ago that said, can you imagine like 85% of your feed being video? But the difference is with link with um, TikTok, it's all video. You know what you're getting. When you go to Instagram, you know, it's a mix. With yeah. LinkedIn, it's an interesting feed because this is now a separate feed. So I don't right. know how they're gonna th- how they're gonna integrate it. Uh, what are your thoughts? I'm a little concerned <laughs> <laughs> because um, we both know. I mean, we're marketers. We both know a new platform. Let's post, right? But so, what are you gonna get on it? So they're gonna let anything post. So I don't want to watch TikTok video types on LinkedIn. How do you figure that out and how do you um, eliminate a lot of the trash that you get on TikTok? Because TikTok's a lot of trash. You know that. Well, and the problem is, is that people will download their TikToks and they'll post them on Instagram. You can see that because there's a TikTok logo. Well, unfortunately, I'm now seeing that over on LinkedIn. As soon as I go, it's one of the first things I see is somebody has downloaded their TikTok video and boom, it's right over there on LinkedIn. And so I don't know, like it, 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 it's a little bothersome because yeah. I always think of LinkedIn as a pure platform, right? Mm-hmm. It's a business professional yeah. platform. It's pure built. You know, we have a newsletter on LinkedIn, which yeah. is very business focused. Um, everything is business focused. So I don't want to see somebody, you know, doing remix videos on <laughs> you know, on LinkedIn. So I don't know. It's going to be an interesting thing. Um, I'll say good for them for testing it. Yeah. Cause you know, they do have the FOMO, but um, I'm just, I feel like it's a little bit of a stay in your lane. Yeah. So right? I don't know if, you could, if there's somehow they could figure out how to monitor it or say, you know, but who's going to listen? I mean, if I was selling t-shirts on Instagram, I'm going to pop them up on LinkedIn too. And so, yeah, so 
unfortunately it's starting to get all mixed up like where do yeah. you go and then um you know we always uh, recommend all our clients or business clients to be on linkedin to make sure that oh. they have their presence there to have a professional profile to have a linkedin newsletter so uh, i don't know <laughs> yeah. I just hope it doesn't dilute it because I've always had a lot of respect for LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I just feel like it's over here. It's separate. It stayed in its lane. It stayed professional. It's a place to go for true networking, yeah. uh, really getting to know people, that kind of stuff. And the other social media platforms I felt were less engaging. It was more of a one, you know, you, you went on, you kind of were a voyeur, you're watching a lot of things and you're posting and all of that kind of stuff. Yeah. But I mean, everybody's admitting there's not as much engagement, but over on LinkedIn, there still is. Yeah. So, you know, people are still there and they're hanging out and they're building relationships and making those connections and stuff like that. So I hope this doesn't dilute the platform because I think it's very purposeful. Yeah. Well, we'll see, so, I guess. Right. Exactly. <laughs> Will we try it? Of course. <laughs> Uh, well, exactly. And I don't know whether I, I haven't dived that deep into it. Um, I'm trying to understand whether they're just pulling all the videos from the stream and putting it in one place. Or do you have to upload that separately? Kind of right. like an Instagram where you kind of go, here's a post, you want to do a post, you want to do a story, do you want to do a reel. And right. with your reel, it also says post to feed. So, you know, Instagram kind of figured it out. Um, I don't know what LinkedIn's going to do with that. I'm, I'm assuming they're just pulling, but I don't know that for sure. Well, we'll find out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's new things. So I always like things new on my birthday, which yeah. is really fun. So. so stay tuned, everyone. Make sure you follow us because you'll see us trying it out. Yep. Um, and we'll let you know what our experience is like. And go and see if you have that because some people don't. Fee, you had said um, yesterday. I did yesterday. You didn't have it. Um, so go check your app and see if you have it. I'd just be interested in knowing whether you're, you know, if you go on LinkedIn are you going to go through a, a singular video feed where it's all right. video or um, is that something that you're like, no, I just want to stick with sort of the traditional feed. Yeah. It'll be interesting. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Sure for them, it's always good to try new things, right? Throw yeah. the spaghetti on the wall, see if it sticks. It's nice <laughs> doing it. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right. Well, speaking of networking again, good segue. Mm, yes. Um, Networking, making connections, building relationships, uh, doing that online is obviously very important to your business, maintaining uh, connections, engagement, that kind of stuff. Um, but what about that pure networking concept of in-person networking events, online networking events, you know, taking it off of social media and actually uh, going to different networking groups. What are your because thoughts? Because it's summertime. <laughs> summertime gives us more opportunities because yes. why? Because as Canadians, we crawl out. For those of you who are not in Canada, we crawl <laughs> out of the snow in the summer <laughs> and venture our Brush way, ourselves off. <laughs> venture our way into perhaps going to some um, outdoor fun events, uh, summertime events. You know, our summer short. So we're out there. So it'd be great to know what we could do to uh, really improve our networking capabilities in the summertime. All right. Well, with that, um, <laughs> we have a special guest today uh, that we're bringing in our networking expert, uh, the one that runs the network at yep. the Mastermind City. So who better than uh, Miss Linda Stanko? Yay. Hi, Linda. Hey, hi. Thanks for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Yay. Awesome. So. Talk to us. Summer, um, people are on vacation. Uh, maybe kids are home. Maybe different events are going on. We get to crawl out of the snow and back into the summer. Maybe a patio, maybe casual. Um, what's the summer networking season look like? Uh, well, I will tell you, it's really interesting because um, many of the people that I've talked to or trained or coached with, they really believe that, well, not all of them, a lot of people still believe that summer is, as you said, vacation time, family time, kids time, and they forget that it's a prime opportunity to start networking right. because of the fact that with, with summer networking, you're, you're not thinking that you're at a business event, right? You are comfortable, you're casual, you're more laid back, you're not really thinking business, I got to sell, 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 which I totally disagree with anyway, because I don't believe in that. Um, I believe in building relationships. And what an amazing time to do it in the summer when you're out and about, you're 
at your child or your grandchild's, you know, uh, sports activities and you're comfortable and you're casual and you're having conversations as you're standing around. It always comes up to business. It's amazing to me how much people will say when they want to get to know you. So what do you do? Mm -hmm. Prime opportunity to start building that relationship, ditch the pitch. I always believe in ditching the pitch and just have a conversation with them. There's so much that you can do for summer networking. It actually is more effective than just regular networking because the temperature is high, but the temperature of your thoughts are lowered. You're more casual, you're really easygoing, and that's the best time. And a lot of times there's a drink in hand because yeah, mm -hmm. we're in Canada, it's hot. We like to have a summer cooler or something. You know, uh, resistance is low. So you're not always thinking, you know, when you have that conversation and somebody says, what do you do? And they start talking and it's an immediate pitch and you think, oh crap, here we go, right? Just, they're gonna sell to me. In the summer, it's just easy conversation, mm -hmm. which really is what networking needs to be. So what are the pros and cons versus, you know, again, you use the example of being on the soccer pitch. So, yeah. you know, I'm talking to a fellow parent and it's a casual conversation. Those ones are always surprised me like, well, what do you do? Well, actually, I'm uh, this. And then you end up having those conversations um, a little bit deeper versus going to a specific networking event in the summer. Is the vibe different when you go to, whether it's online or in person in the summer versus sort of that casual conversation, you meet somebody um, that's not a specific networking uh, business event? Yeah, I think the vibe is very, still very different. If you're online, um, you're usually opting in to go to something. So it still has that more uh, traditional feel of that you're there to talk about what you do, who you help, who you are, um, getting to know the other person for the same information. So I think it's still a little bit more traditional when you're online, but if you have a good host, they can make it very casual and comfortable and put everybody at ease and sort of take that, as I said, the temperature down uh, for selling. When you're in person, especially in summertime, it is that uh, easy breezy sort of feeling, right? You're you're not in your business garb, let's say, right? You're not dressed for that. You're dressed for summer. You're having a good time. You're with your family, so you're not going to go in a business suit to your grandson or your son's, you know, soccer game or baseball game. You're there comfortably, and so is everybody else. So yes, there's a very different vibe if you're in person. If you're out on a patio somewhere and having a cocktail, and there's a breeze and a lake and it's comfortable and casual. Online would still have a little bit more of a traditional feel. But there's also really great networking events, like there are festival networking events in the summer that, you know, all of a sudden people are like, yeah, because people will show up. They're not going to worry about snowstorms and things. So how does that, cha that change in terms of what are the summer networking events like? Well, again, I would say um, a lot of the people that I have talked to forget that there are still there is still business going on. You know, I remember one time I was putting on a networking event and live and it was in August and I was I was really concerned that nobody was going to show up. You'd be surprised how many people are still available. In fact, if they have time off, they're actually they, they sometimes do the three to four day work week they have more time to get out there right. and go to events. So you got to keep that in mind too. But yeah, there's like the chamber has great events. You have different organizations, charitable organizations doing, you know, golf tournaments or baseball tournaments, or they're doing, you know, um, different, different events, but they're placing them instead of indoors. A lot of times they are on a, on a, you know, a restaurant patio or a rooftop patio because they still, they want to get as much of that outdoor as they can. Mm -hmm. So there are so many different things that you can tap into, but you have to look for them, um, especially for uh, people who, who want to network or they may be somebody who's, who sells at like vendor shows and stuff. Those are awesome in the summer. People are out and about. There's a lot of places that have parks. They put on special events all the time. So get on Meetup, get on Eventbrite, get on LinkedIn, look for those things. Post, ask, hey, I'm, I've got time. I want to get out there and network. Ask, are there any networking events going on in your area? You'd be surprised how many people would answer you. I think it's interesting because, again, we have such a short summer here <laughs> where we are in the world, right? It's like two months. 
and people do forget. People do forget that business still happens. People think, okay, well, we take July and August off and then we'll kick it off back in September. You know, the old saying, September is the new January, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But there is still business going on. Sometimes, you know, business as usual, and sometimes it's ramped up, right? Like I know, you know, for example, Faye and I, like we do a lot of planning in the summer. We do a lot of probably a lot more work work because we're together more because it's easier right. for traveling and stuff like that. So yes, we might be outside, but we're sitting on her deck. We're at a table with our laptops. And sometimes in the summertime, we end up doing more work yeah. uh, than we do because again, more planning. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to do this summer <laughs> I'm very excited yeah. about <laughs> to kick things off. Um, but you're right. There are a lot more business opportunities. Business doesn't slow down. And I think the conversations that you end up having at a networking event, in the summer end up being a little bit more casual because you can say, so have you been on vacation? You know, sometimes you don't know how to start those conversations or how to end those conversations or how to continue, but there's more casual things to talk about. Therefore the conversation continues outside of sort of the traditional business conversation. Absolutely. And one of the biggest things that you can do as somebody who wants to build relationships, I mean, talk about family. You know, we talked about vacation time is often family time and spending time with friends and, you know, getting out of that, whether you're in corporate or you have your own business, you're an entrepreneur, it's that downtime with your family. So show the other person that you're interested in their family, get to know them. This is the time to build relationships. And it's the perfect time to start getting to know people. And when you do, they're more inclined to want to stay connected to you because you've made them feel that they were important to you to talk to, to get to know and really understand what they do and who they are. And I think um, for me, I think, you know, I'm not a big looking for a certain specific networking event to go to. You guys know it's not my thing. However, in the summer, there are so many events happening that, um, you know, classes you can take, um, go to Eventbrite, there's a million of them, meetups. There's different um, activities that you would do in the summer that you wouldn't necessarily do through the winter. And I would look at that like that's a great opportunity to do something you love, but meet a whole new group of people that you would have never met before. And that's sort of like an informal way to network, which is there's no stress. There's no expectations. You're going out there. It might be you know, it might be um, to go kayaking at Wine Marsh, which is what Stacy's probably going to be doing. Um, but then you meet all these people who have the same interest, yeah. right? They have the same interest as you, the kayaking, but they're probably all professionals or they have people that might need your services or your products. And that's a great opportunity to look at it a little differently than just searching out a specific networking event. The key would be is knowing how to use, um, integrate, use some strategies and tactics in order to um, remember, remind yourself to be able to mention your business. And I think, um, I think Linda's got a few programs that everyone can hook into to do that as well. Yeah, there's, uh, before I talk about that, you know, I agree with you. And one thing that I would say too, for, you know, professionals out there, you know, being specific on, on you know, there's that casual encounter, that unexpected networking opportunity, of course. But if you are searching for things to do, whether it's an event or a workshop or a class, also remember um, there's there's different uh, scenarios. You can be going there just to connect with people, to learn something new and connect with people at the same time, which is a huge opportunity. But there's also, if you really want to showcase yourself, be that person who puts the, the workshop on you know, where other people can come. They're going to get to know you about more what you do. Now, I do have um, some differences on that. So if you're the person who's putting the thing on, just remember, if you're putting on the network, uh, a workshop or a class or a master class of some kind, uh, especially if it's live, just remember that you're not going to get the opportunity to meet everybody and have those um, conversations like the people in your audience will. When you're sitting there and you're at a class, especially in the summer when it's nice and casual and expectations, as you said, fare down, um, people will have a more in-depth conversation mm -hmm. while they're, especially if it's a workshop, let's say you're doing a vision board or let's say you're doing 
um, something where they give you time to work on your stuff, conversations start and that's where the magic happens. So be very cognizant of what your objectives are for your summer networking so that you know exactly what you need to be doing to grow your business the way you want to grow it. What tips do you have before we go into an event? So oh. before we go to either a, a planned networking event or something a little bit more casual where you maybe have business on your brain, what are some tips that you can give us to prepare ourselves before mm -hmm. we go to the event? Yeah, sure. Well, you can't really prepare. Well, you can prepare yourself for unexpected networking. That's for sure. Um, I know there are some people who don't really like the business card thing. I still believe in it because it's that touch point, right? Um, if you're somewhere and a casual conversation comes up, if that person, if you start talking about it and if that person says, oh, you know what, I'd love to learn more about this. Do you have a business card? Just make sure you have a couple on hand. It's that touch point. I'm not going to remember somebody when I get home to look them up. So I still like to use business cards occasionally. It's not always. But if you're going to a planned one to prepare ahead of time, yeah, like um, if it's an online event or it's a chamber event or whatever event it is, if you have access and you know who's going to be there, well, first and foremost, always check out who's putting it on and find out who's doing it so that when you're there, you can thank them for putting it on because they just created an opportunity for you to meet maybe five or 50 or 500 people. And go so, check them out on LinkedIn. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, check them out. That was my next point. Check them out on LinkedIn and look at what they do. And the same is why your profile is so important. That's why the profile is very important. Make what you know, always make it easy for people to find you so that they know what you do. I've actually um, had an embarrassing situation, not embarrassing for me, but embarrassing for them because I remember I looked at them on LinkedIn and then I go up to them, and, oh, like I see that you that you do this because that was the most current thing. And they're like, oh, I haven't done that in five years. Oh, and I'm like, yeah. Always make sure your profile's updated. Yeah, I do. I remember yeah. going to a conference once in New York and I saw a girl that I remember, she used to do this raw food vegan diet for uh, people before their weddings. So to get in shape before their weddings. And when I went there, didn't remotely do any of that stuff again. <laughs> And it was, she was, yeah, she was embarrassed. And I was like, there's nothing, I thought it was a great program, but she totally yeah. abandoned it. So um, yeah, make sure your stuff's up to date. Yeah. Well, and not only that, you know, as the person who is, is meeting that person, um, I always like to have different kind of sayings so that I just know. So what, if I was walking into, into somewhere and I had checked out their LinkedIn and I saw that they did this, what I have learned to do is to say, oh, you know, I happen to look at your LinkedIn. I like to see who I'm going to meet. Um, I saw that you do this, this. Are you still currently doing that? And it makes both of you at ease. It makes that person at ease and they don't feel like, oh, crap, I didn't, you know, update my profile, but it lets them know they need to update their profile. And then you don't look silly because how many times do we get messages, you know, oh, um, I really love your profile and I see that you're a yoga instructor. I do not do yoga. They do not look at my profile. They did not read the profile. They just connected with me and gave me, you know, whoever they were talking to. So things do happen. Just have something. It's kind of like those exit strategies have a way of subtly saying, you know, are you still currently doing that? I think that's a great segue. It's a great tip. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well, you know what? Um, we are running out of time. So before we go, um, can you you have you have a few programs? You have some free stuff. Yeah, you have new courses. You have a big Be like program. Me. People want to learn how to do the before, the after, the follow up, the how to prepare for meetings. You've got it all. Talk to us. Yeah. So well, I'm just in the process. I've just finished one. It's it's a mini course. And it's all about summer networking. And it's it's about really having those strategies around how to make the most of your summer, your professional networking parts of you. In there, we talk, I talk about objectives to make sure that, again, preparing before an event, if it's a, a full event, um, being prepared if it's an, you know, an unexpected conversation, making sure you're using, uh, utilizing social media, whether, you know, whether the people that that you your your market is is on Instagram or TikTok or whatever. But yes, definitely LinkedIn, always LinkedIn. I, I think it's the most professional one. 
Um, and I will say that um, just to allude to what you guys were saying, I actually had somebody say to me that LinkedIn is becoming the new Facebook, that you really don't need a business to be on there. And I totally disagreed with them because I thought, you know what, this is, as Faye said, it's a pure it's pure and it's very business focused. So make sure that you're utilizing the right social media for you. Um, but I agree with what you guys say. If you're if you're a business, you should be on LinkedIn. Uh, we talk about building relationships. I talk about active listening. I talked about you know talk about doing the follow up and doing it strategically and effectively so that you're. Your focus is on when you're following up, the focus is on building the relationship and not just selling. Um, so those are all, all tips that I have. Um, I have a bigger program. It's called Networking Excellence. It is on the Mastermind City platform, so you can find it in there. We're all on the Mastermind City platform. Yeah, so yeah, there's all work. kinds of them. There's free stuff in there. You know, if you're looking to, you know, network, say you're going abroad, there's free PDFs. There's all kinds of things in there. So all you have to do is go to our hub, so hub.themastermind.city. And if you go to the networking, if you go to courses and go to the networking collection, you'll see it all. You'll see the free um, that you can sign up for, um, the mini course and uh, the full programs all uh, all there waiting for you so that you can take the, make the most out of your summer network. Yeah, and I would love to invite everybody, come to you know connect with me. Um, I'd love to have you come as a guest to try out the network. We do it every Friday from 12 to one. And the last Friday of the month, we do a two hour one because we include a masterclass training of some kind. And the one coming up the next week, no, on uh, the end of the month, whatever the last Friday is. Um, <laughs> you always we're going to be talking about Friday, stuff right? for entrepreneurs. Yes. So okay. there's all kinds of ways that you can. But yes, please join us in the city because there is a lot of information and value for you and people to connect with. And, and you make it fun over the summer, right? Yeah. I do. <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay, thank you, Linda, um, for thank bringing you, us your knowledge in regards to networking. And um, yeah, thanks for joining us today. Well, thanks for having me. I appreciate your time. Okay. All right. Thanks, guys. Um, that was great. Um, I think sometimes we just forget that we still need to keep our business hat on over the summer. Yeah. And uh, yeah, want to make it so that you can enjoy yourself, um, but always be open for networking opportunities, even when you're on vacation. <laughs> so go book your kayak and get ready to network. <laughs> All right, we'll see you next week. Bye. Thanks for joining us here at The Mastermind City. You don't have to say goodbye because there are other ways that you can join us. If you like what you've heard today, then join our professional networking community and it's absolutely free where you can be part of our global community to build relationships, grow your business and access live training, or learn more about how you can get year round access to not only us, but to all our endless masterminds. So just go to themastermind.city and we'll see you in the city.